Crypto DLT with Mr. Connector. Be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell for daily content. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Mr. Connector again. It's Monday, March the 4th. 2024 and we are green across the board today all of our favorite coins are looking great lots of green we love to see it we are in a great mood this morning we are very optimistic about the future we see this technology as revolutionary and it will change humanity for the better we've got some hiccups along the way though speaking of that here's one on protos.com Judge rules that crypto trades made on exchanges are fair game for the SEC. Yeah, I know, guys, looking at these headlines, first thing you think of is, well, Ripple, Judge Torres ruled that XRP in it of itself is not a security. So why is this other judge ruling that crypto on exchanges are fair game for the SEC? Let's read through this article real quick. Uh, first, let's see which judge is ruling on that. Her name is Tana Lynn. Here's her picture. She was confirmed by a mostly Democratic Congress. And here's her biography. She's a judge for the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington. Lynn was nominated by President Joseph Biden and sworn in on December 8th, 2021. Judge Lynn is the first Asian American Article III judge and former public defender in Washington State. Uh, a little bit of her background. She was with Keller Rohrbach LLP, the firm's complex litigation group. She began her legal career as a trial attorney for the Public Defender Service. She argued cases before the Court of Appeals. She joined the Employment Litigation Section of the Civil Rights Division, enforcing discrimination laws, litigation coordinator for the Michigan Poverty Law Program. She developed statewide projects to address low-income communities. Judge Lynn attended Cornell University for her undergraduate degree, and she graduated from NYU School of Law, where she was Ruth Tilden Snow Scholar. Let's go on to read this article. In a recent ruling in the Western Court of Washington has given the biggest indication yet from a federal judge that crypto traded on secondary markets like Coinbase should be classified as securities under the remit of the Securities and Exchange Commission. The case in question saw former Coinbase employee Isan Wally, his brother and their friend... Samir Ramani accused of running 1.5 million inside trading operation from the platform. They have previously settled with the SEC. However, Ramani is still on the run. So we're seeing this a lot in crypto. We're seeing the bad actors make the entire space look bad and therefore allowing these regulators to come in with more ammo to regulate this market. So it's a classic case of a few bad actors ruining it for the rest of us, it sounds like. But on this channel, we are still optimistic that freedom reigns and that the future will look good for us. But it's going to be a little bit of a battle, folks. Hang in there with us. On Friday, the judge officially ruled that despite the trades made by the trio happening on Coinbase, they should still be classified as securities and therefore follow within the jurisdiction of the SEC and famously anti-crypto chair Gary Gensler. Needless to say, such a ruling could have huge repercussions, not just for this case, but for the entire crypto industry. Yeah, guys, as soon as uh, something's ruled on, it sets a precedent for other cases to be able to reference to. So each one of these cases are so important moving forward. Each issuer continued to make such representation regarding the profitability of their tokens, even as the tokens were traded on secondary markets. Thus, under Howey, all crypto assets that Romani purchased and traded were investment contracts, the judge wrote. So even though Wally and his brother have previously settled with the SEC, the judge is still ruling that these are securities under the Howey test. Lynn's decision to classify crypto traded on secondary markets as securities is totally in step with Gensler. Imagine that. 
who believes that everything other than Bitcoin should be classified as a security. Friday's ruling may also reportedly impact a separate case involving Kraken, as Lynn's ruling will be incorporated as case law. In addition, multiple cases involving securities are being heard by appellate courts, which means there's a chance this ongoing debate on crypto securities could reach the Supreme Court. It's looking like it's going to go that way, guys, all the way to the Supreme Court. The government is trying to get these little cases won so they can set precedent. But we've got a bunch of freedom fighters out there fighting for us, fighting for the future of crypto. Here we've got a post on X from at status. You should all be very proud of yourselves because you endured a bear market. Brace for a potential 12 to 18 month bull market ahead and focus your investments on AI, gaming, and deep end narratives. Prepare yourself for the roller coaster of emotions and take profits on the way up. Let's check out this chart, see which sectors he's talking about. Hot crypto narratives and tokens, tokens with great ROI potential. He's got three different sectors he's concentrating here AI, gaming, and deep end. The AI market is projected to reach 1.7 trillion by 2030. AI bolsters crypto security, trading and analytics. AI automates risk management and fraud detection. AI integrated with blockchain for scalability. AI speeds up transactions and tailors user experiences. Yeah, we're constantly talking about how we need AI to integrate with blockchain to govern the world basically we've got to have ai regulation and crypto regulation together they go hand in hand and in gaming ai the web 3 gaming market may hit 614 billion by 2030 web 3 gaming leverages blockchain crypto and nfts beyond gaming players earn real value in game rewards Web3 games offer immersive and innovative experiences, enhances gaming content and infrastructure. And what's deep in? Decentralized physical infrastructure network. Deep in's market size could reach anywhere from 500 billion to 4.1 trillion. That's the highest one he's got on here, folks. Deep in connects physical devices in a decentralized manner, empowered by cryptocurrency based rewards dpn improves security efficiency and transparency dpn creates new value and ownership dpn catalyst for blockchain and web3 adoption and for the coins on his dpn section we've got peaq aethir grass gmrx dimo and honey so many coins in this space guys you know a lot of people think that a lot of the coins will go away uh I, yeah i think the a lot of them will especially the layer ones that don't pick up uh adoption but i do see a future where we have so many coins for every little purpose but a lot of them will be tokens nfts that run on the different layer ones layer zeros and just to touch on the topic of all these meme coins pumping and the utility coins lagging behind, I know you guys get frustrated with that. Here's a post by Linda P. Jones. Many people are perplexed by what is happening in the crypto market. It was supposed to be the year of Bitcoin, but it looks like the year of meme coins. So what's happening? Are these three things causing this? Number one, hedge funds are investing in meme coins. A hedge fund manager mentioned they raise funds specifically to invest in meme coins. I don't know much about money they raise, but millions of dollars invested in meme coins will move them dramatically higher. Meme coins, number two, meme coins provide greater percentage gains than Bitcoin. If Bitcoin moves from 60K to 120K, that's a 100% move. Certainly better than stocks and ETFs, but not as good as some meme coins, which move thousands of percent. At least they have in the past. Number three, most importantly, I think this is likely the last year of meme coins. Why? Because next year we may get crypto legislation. This year we'll get stable coin legislation. Next year, crypto legislation. That makes this year the last year you can buy more meme coins and make a killing. It's all a cycle. This is the fourth year of the cycle. 
which is like 2020 all over again for crypto. Hot, hot, hot. You already know meme coins are speculative, so don't put all of your money in them. Investing this year may make you a bundle, but look for a time to sell them next year. The profits this year will soar, then they will fade away like the dot coms did. They were fun and lucrative while they lasted. This is exactly right, folks, especially this part here about the coins fading away like the dot coms did. Yeah, if you don't have utility going into this new world, I do not think your coin's going to make it. And these hedge funds investing like they are into meme coins, that's just dangerous to me. And Echo to Truth says commodities are about to take off. Reposting from at Goldseek. And there you go. No smashes. This move looks like it's the real deal. Gold is ready to rocket hundreds of dollars an ounce higher. Let's go. Let's go. Watcher Guru just in $69 million worth of Bitcoin shorts liquidated in the past 24 hours. Let's go. Let's go. And let's see what the Fed's up to. This from the Kobiesi letter. Wow, another huge call from Apollo this morning. The Fed will not cut rates this year, and rates are going to stay higher for longer. Apollo says the U.S. economy is not slowing down, and the Fed pivot has provided a strong tailwind to growth since December. They also note that many measures of inflation are pointing higher again, including super core inflation at 4.5%. And guys, remember, they're not even calculating our food costs when they factor in inflation. It's a, it's a joke. Meanwhile, asking rents are rising. More cities are seeing rising rents and home prices are rising. Just two months ago, markets were priced in six rate cuts in 2024. The Fed's job is far from done. Back to the live coin watch. Look at Electronium, ETN. Part of the Digital Pound Foundation, up 223% on the 90 day. What's going on with ETN? Let's take a quick look. Well, they've posted here as a reminder an ETN online wallet will be migrated automatically to the new blockchain following the Aurelius blockchain update. And on this link, I watched the video, it's kind of a long video. But basically, Electronium has an entirely new blockchain with an EVM smart contract built in. Uh, and, you know, it's saying here the wallet's going to automatically upgrade. Uh, the new blockchain has five second finality, and that universities are using their ETN rewards for their students to build projects on. Um, yeah, everything's going to migrate over. We don't have to do anything if you have ETN in your wallet. Of course, they do use a bridge to migrate, and we're always worried about bridges on this channel. Bridges are very dangerous. They're hackable. Um, they did use a third party to give them a score of 9 out of 10 on their bridge, so they've taken care of that one little small issue. Everything should move over fine, um, and ETN's making moves here. Let's uh, keep an eye on them. Electronium. And here's a post from at Mr. Man XRP privately issued crypto such as Bitcoin have struggled as money and stores of value prompting the Monetary Authority of Singapore to prioritize regulated stable coins and central bank digital currencies. The Monetary Authority of Singapore aims to establish Singapore as a digital assets hub, emphasizing the significance of digital infrastructure beyond speculative crypto trading. We do speculate, but we speculate on the utilities of these coins, not just speculating for the heck of it like these cartoon coins we see. The authority is launching the Global Layer 1 GL1 initiative to facilitate cross-border transactions and enhance tokenized asset trading globally. The Monetary Authority of Singapore... Mass has collaborated with the XRPL Global Layer 1 and Stellar own projects. Stellar's partnership with established tech players highlights its role in facilitating transactions, while Ripple focuses on streamlining international money transfers with financial institutions. For those who didn't see my video on Stellar and Ripple 
working together in harmony that's a great video it goes over a few things on how we can utilize both blockchains not just one uh let's watch this video and see what's going on in singapore one privately issued private privately issued cryptocurrencies two central bank digital currencies or cbdc's for short <clears throat> three tokenized bank liabilities and four well-regulated stable coins that's it folks those four things there those are huge let's play that again privately issued cryptocurrencies privately issued crypto two central bank digital currencies CBDC. or cbdc's for short <clears throat> three tokenized bank liabilities tokenized bank liabilities and four well-regulated stable coins that's it you've got the private money private cryptos cbdc's bank liabilities and stable coins the way i feel about the cbdc's as long as we have stable coins with a digital bill of rights to protect us to compete with the public sector cbdc's we're good there might be restrictions on cbdc's there might be they might make it where you can only do certain things with their with the government money there might be expiration dates with the cbdc and yes we might have to follow along and fall right in line with that that's not going to be our main wallets if you ask me that's going to be a small portion of what we're going to be holding as private individuals uh these small cbdc's we're, we're going to have stable coins that's going to be our main store of value and they're going to be backed by precious metals let's continue watching Cryptocurrencies, private cryptocurrencies, have failed the test of digital money. They have performed poorly as a medium of exchange or store of value. Bitcoin mainly. Their prices are subject to sharp speculative swings. Many investors in these cryptocurrencies have suffered significant losses. The next contender, wholesale CBDCs and second and third contenders, wholesale CBDCs and tokenized bank li liabilities. Yeah, all these CBDCs, they have to interoperate with one another. That's, that's the wholesale part. Now, these can play the role of digital money and help to achieve atomic settlement because they correspond to the existing monetary system, which comprises central bank notes and coins and bank deposits. So you have CBDCs and tokenized bank liabilities. Since 2016... MAS has conducted many experiments with other central banks and the financial industry to explore the use of wholesale CBDCs on distributed ledgers to facilitate real-time cross-border payments and settlements. We will take our experiments a step further next year. I'm pleased to announce that MAS will pilot the live issuance of wholesale CBDCs to instantaneously settle payments across commercial banks here. Now, previously, MAS had only simulated the issuance of wholesale CBDCs within test environments. We will now go further into live. We will partner the local banks to pilot the use of wholesale CBDCs as a common settlements asset in domestic payments. So banks will issue tokenized bank li liabilities that represent claims on their balance sheets by their retail customers, right? Now, the retail customers will be able to use these tokenized bank liabilities in transactions with merchants who can in turn credit these tokenized bank liabilities with their respective banks. Now, the outstanding interbank obligations arising from these transactions will be settled via an automatic transfer of wholesale CBDCs that the banks are holding. So clearing and settlement occurs in a single step on the same infrastructure. Unlike the current system in which clearing and settlement take place on different systems and settlement occurs with a lag. Singapore is ready, folks. They have their reg tech set up and they are ready to roll it out. And it's from Nerdy X. Make sure you go follow at Sean S90X. He's posting about Project Aladdin. It's a tech platform that unifies the investment management process through a common data language to enable scale 
provide insights and support true business transformation. It centers around your whole portfolio across public and private markets and futures markets and the unique outcomes you aspire to deliver on behalf of your end investors for this era and next. The Aladdin Enterprise Platform transforms complex multi-vendor environments into a deeply connected and scalable ecosystem tailored for your investment process. And with a centralized, consistent source of data with programmatic access via an open architecture, you have transparency, visibility, and control at every stage. And he's posted here from Bloomberg, BlackRock, and BlackRock and Fidelity capitalize on FOMO from Bitcoin ETF mania. Nearly half of all Bitcoin ETF inflows have gone to BlackRock. Some smaller funds undercut big players' market-leading fees. Aladdin by BlackRock, your talent, your secret sauce, our platform. Welcome to the new era of investment management tech. Yeah, you know we're going to keep an eye on BlackRock. Thanks, Nerdy, for that. And here we have Ashley Prosper posting about Ethereum possibly being labeled a security. They approved Prometheum as the first digital securities trading platform. And Prometheum has stated that they will only deal with securities. And their first one they're listing is going to be Ethereum. So that's very interesting. Also remember that Prometheum has a big Wang Zhang China influence on them and their code base. So we don't know what to think about that. Uh, but she goes on to say on March 1st, the SEC obtained default judgment against defendants in the SEC versus Wahi case. This case names several digital assets as securities. All but one operate on the Ethereum network. The cryptos named in the case are AMP, RLY, DDX, XYO, RGT, LCX, POWR, DFX, and Chrome. This only increases my suspicions that the SEC is going to officially label Ethereum as a security at some point in the not too distant future. For those in the XPR community, I had a video the day before yesterday, the XPR fork drama. There's a lot of questions in the comments. I tried to answer them the best I could, guys. Uh, it's pretty complicated. If you want to hear the original one, go to Marshall Hainer's page on X, and he's posted the spaces that I was listening to where he explains the whole migration of the xpr network to the metal blockchain very interesting guys and what did elon musk post here about open ai this is why he's suing open ai let's see what he has to say look it does seem weird that something can be um a non-profit uh open source and somehow transform itself into a for-profit closed source um, I mean, this would be like, like, let's say you funded an organization to save the Amazon rainforest, and instead they became a, a lumber company <laughs> and chopped down the forest and sold it for money. And you'd be therefore like, well, wait a second, that's uh, the exact opposite of what I gave the money for. Yeah. Uh, is that legal? That doesn't seem legal. Uh, and if it is, and, and in general, if it is legal to uh, start a company as a non-profit and then take the IP and transfer it to a for-profit that then makes tons of money. Um, shouldn't everyone start? Shouldn't that be the default? Right. Uh, look. Elon makes some good points, doesn't he? We have to get this AI under control. It can't be for profit. It needs to be a public good, basically. Uh, another check on the market says we're still green and ready to go higher, guys. XRP at 65 cents. XLM was up today. XLM's up to uh, almost 15 cents now. We like both of those tokens. We want to check on our XPR. These are the 12-hour candles. Wow, that thing's moving around a lot. We're getting a little more volume on that. On the Hedera network, saucer swaps up 142% on the 30-day. Karate's up a little bit today. 
Where's our H suite? There it is. 14% up today on the Cosmos chain. We've got XKI up 91% today on the 24 hours. Chihuahua and Canto and humans.ai is up again. Kive is up again. Cosmos. Cosmos is a strong chain, guys. Keep your eyes on that one. If you're looking to buy any deep res today in the uh, Mr. Connectors favorites, we've got Zahal is down a little bit. That one's questionable. Uh, they have uh, forked the XRP network to put smart contracts on a different blockchain, Zahal. And that's because they don't have the hooks enabled yet on the XRP network to allow for the simple smart contract connections. So this coin is depending to me, it's dependent on whether XRP gets those hooks enabled or not. And of course it could split off and do its own thing. Uh, they do have to re rewrite though. If they're going to connect back to the XRP ledger, they have a little bit of code to, um, as my understanding to, uh, to be able to enable hooks to connect to the ledger. But overall we're looking good. That's going to wrap it up for today. Leave a comment. If you got anything to add to this, if you've got a text RP account, and I do have a video about that if you want to look through my page uh, explaining all that. It's so cool. You can log in with your wallet address, and your wallet address is your identity. You can make phone calls. You can text. You can use that as your messaging hub for all your platforms, Twitter, Twilio, Discord, that is so cool, but I've got a public room called the connector room. If y'all want to hop in there and as always like, and subscribe to the channel, have a good day, guys. We're pumped. We're ready for the future. It's looking good. We just got to get over this little hump here, guys. Mr. Connector out.